Hello and welcome and in this video we're going to make a digital asset from our cable tool. So if you followed along along these videos you will have this result right now where we have these quite interesting cables uh, based on a simulation. So the next step or logical next step is actually making a tool out of this or a digital asset. So this digital asset this can be used inside of Houdini but we can also then use it in game which can be quite interesting. So let's jump into this directly. So let's just select everything I have um, and we can either go to assets and make digital assets or what I also like to do is uh, pressing shift C or you can here also click on this create sub network. And this will collapse your whole network into a single node here. And if you double click on this, we still have our information. Uh, but interesting more if we here on this sub network with right click I can now make a digital asset and I can also make a versioned digital asset. So let's go here to a digital asset and create new. So first of all here we can give this a name, we can say the author, we can say the different branches, we can say what version this is, we can give some more properties and overall things, but mainly what you want to do here just give this a proper name. Uh, so in this case, um, tutorial cable and press create and now we should have a digital asset which is called tutorial cable so if you right click on this again you can now have different properties on the digital asset itself so we want to now make a actual tool or custom interface so right now the interface here is just blank and we want to make a few custom sliders so let's just jump in our network it's the same as it was before what i also would like to do here is make sure we're having an output so this is my output just to be sure that this is always the result that is coming out now next up is adding here a menu so opening the menu so i'm going to say here open that menu and i can see that my uh, label is still subnet so maybe i just name it cable tutorial pressing apply and we can go to parameters this is where we're going to create our parameters we can have some node settings and so on um, what I also want to do is actually want to use custom inputs and I'm going to here use our inputs here set a minimum to one and a maximum to two and press apply so the reason for that is I can now input a custom shape or curve and can also use the second one here for collisions in my simulation so if I take a closer look at my network I should be able to find uh, these two uh, nodes here. So these are then my inputs. So I can now replace my line with this one. So let's uh, copy paste this then for our network. And number two, I'm going to place it over here at my simulation. So if you're, if you're not super familiar with it, we can actually use our uh, input over here as collision. So this is actually marked as a collision geometry. So let's go back one level up. I can paste back my line. This is so my input. And now let's also use a box here and place that box in front of the cable here. So I'm going to grab it, place it somewhere around here. And we can now test out if the collision would work. Scale it like so. And let's re-simulate the cables. So as you can see, we now have the cables falling down on our box. So we now have the option to do custom collisions here um, with that. So we can also just say we don't need any collisions. It, it will just perfectly work uh, with that as well. And so in our case, we can also now uh, use a other shape as input. It doesn't necessarily have to be a line here. It can be other shapes as well. So now let's go into the creation of our custom menu here. So we're going to go to assets and open here our cable. So we're going to go to parameters and now we can create custom parameters. So let's make this menu maybe a bit smaller and jump here into our network. So what are some of the settings you want to do? And what often I would do is maybe create a couple folders on things I want to create parameters about. So I want to create parameters for this part, which is the main cable. I want to create parameters here for the small cables and I want to create parameters for the simulation. So those are three 
uh, different parts I want to have parameters for. So let's create then three folders to have a structure here. So we have our main cable. We have our small cables, sub cables, and then we have simulation options. So let's start now with the main cable first. We can, for example, here have the, uh, the resolution or the resampling. Uh, you can expose this in case you need this. So let's say here, uh, so resampling. We can just rename this to maybe resolution. Then we want to, for example, here grab the amount of cables, which is here to that division number. So grab it here, there's amount. Then we can also here grab the noise or distortion. So maybe here this value, which is actually the seat. Uh, if I go back here, you can see that this should not just change the seat value. So maybe just call it like position offset. Um, then uh, we could also have that scanning if you want to scale bigger or larger, but I might just keep it to one. I'm just going to leave it for now as it is. Of course, you can grab your own parameters. I'm just going to grab a couple of them. Uh, then for the small cables, um, we can also build in a toggle, which could be cool if you don't want small cables. We can just, uh, uh, for example, here use the switch node. And then we can switch this on or off. But I would like to have them, so I'm just going to leave it. Um, so here's the random selector. So I'm going to have that already here. So run to add a add random ratio to adding a random number here. I'm going to leave the resample as this. And here with the sweep, we could also play around with values. But I think that's good enough for now. We could, I, we could, for example, also do like a seed value or randomizer value. I'm going to just grab here the amount. So amount. Uh, we could also here have the scaling of, of these cables. It would be cool to uh, play around with that in a simulation. So scale value. And then we are going to the simulation options. So in our configuration, we can, for example, maybe grab our stretching value so we can grab it here change stretch so if you want to for example have the cables uh hanging more we can just uh, increase that value and there's some other values you could play around with uh give for example even like to the weight the mass of the cable uh, but also important is to have some options here of the simulation um what i will often do is actually grab the start button and just use it over here so we can reset the simulation if we need it uh, because it might often happen that it might cache data and we want to reset it so it will uh, remove the cache data so i would often put it on top to just simply hit uh, reset then what we can also do here is if you go to forces um, we can here uh, do friction so the cables now collide over each other, but if we increase this friction threshold, uh, they will actually collide less over each other. So I'm going to grab that here uh, and call this friction. So we have that available. And still, let's say I don't want a simulation. Uh, maybe let's build in a switch node. So switch over here and we can grab switch nodes so let's say from here uh, and maybe uh, switch the branches here again make some room by default we could say it could be on or off so by default now it will be off so if i grab this over here and say enable sim then by default it will actually be off and by default you will have uh, this result so these cables uh, which i think are maybe a little bit too large in in, in their scaling 
So we could reduce the P skill value. So maybe let's put a little bit of code here. Then we can say, hey, look at our P skill value and multiply this by, let's write 0.5. That looks a bit better. Maybe even just 0.1. I think that's the same value as our uh, simulation here. Yeah, that looks pretty close to me. That's the same uh, result of that simulation. If I quickly look again, yep. So that's the same value, so we can know a bit what to expect with that. Uh, we could maybe even do an extra folder that talk, that references to geometry and, and optimization. So maybe grab another folder and let's just say optimize. Uh, we could also just grab these values and put them under the main cable or sub cable. It depends on, on what you would prefer where the part of values are. So first of all, what I want to do here is grabbing this value. So I would call this the tolerance. Tolerance cleanup, for example, cleanup. And we can also maybe set the range here in a better value. Since this is a super low value, we can just probably grab this and say uh, 0.1 or maybe even like 0 0.01. Uh, we can here grab our divisions. So we have the main cable divisions. And on here we have our sub cable divisions. And press apply and accept. So let's take a look at what our interface is looking now. So we have our main cable settings. And we can here the resolution, control the resolution. Uh, so we should, so we should not directly see this in the viewport since we are doing this uh, this cleanup step over here. We can here have the amount of cables. So let's increase this to more. You can see it's also automatically doing some scaling there. Uh, we can do some random position offset. Now let's try our step cables or the small cables. So we can have them, for example, on every single one. We can also have them on only one. So we can tweak that. Then we can also say how much of them we want. So maybe let's just say four. Then the scaling value of this. So you can see that maybe we can fine tune this a bit as these cables are smaller. And here we have the simulation. Uh, I can see that the naming is not that nice here. So let's just fix that quickly. So opening the menu again, looking for the button and just say reset simulation. Uh, so here I can enable the simulation, but I also want to toggle. So maybe I should keep my menu open to add a small tweak. So here we have enable simulation and this is an integer, but I want to have a toggle. So toggle, press apply. I'm going to keep my menu here so I can quickly access it later. So if I now should click enable sim, we should now see something. Now, in case this might be some data that, that was already there, that, that was already cached, we can just hit reset and it will actually calculate with back those new values. So that's working correctly. Uh, we can also here play around with friction and see how much that sort of like influences this simulation. So a little bit of change there. And maybe let's go to the optimize then. And here we can do some more cleanup. So if I enable my wireframe and let's say I increase this so we can see that we can nicely sort of like fine tune a bit on how much topology is actually being spent here. And we can also here say I only want to increase the sub cables a bit. So in this case, the sub cables are, or the, so in this case, the main cable is a bit smaller. So I can say we need less topology there. So we can fine tune this a bit better. So that's quite nice to, to have. There might be a couple things that I want to add and change. I would like to maybe disable the simulation first. So first of all, maybe I want to have a setting uh, to scale up the main cable. Uh, that could be nice to actually have a scaling value here. So in our network here, I want to do a sort of like multiplier on the P scale. I actually did that here before. So in theory, I could just copy this node here and place it over here. 
So we are having a P skill and we're going to type something a little bit special here. We're going to say channel and we're going to say uh, scale and close that off. And we have to press this button and it will magically appear a slider over here. So this slider is basically linking this value. So it's, that's why it's also naming the, it's also named scale. It's also named here scale. So now we can grab this value and put it in our menu. So grab, and we can just put it here and just say overall uh, cable scale and set this from 0.5 to 3. Press apply and accept. And let's see if that would work here. So I can, as you can see, uh, scale this a bit up. And I think that's exactly what I want is to have more control over that. So let me now re-simulate the cables. So now they are a bit thicker and that's looking pretty good to me. Now, what I also want is a forced uh, frame number. So in this case, I'm always rendering out on frame 31 because I'm actually here on my timeline. Um, so what I want is we need to use the time shifting node. So if I now press time shifter and we need to plug that in over here and we're going to right click here on the number of frames and we can say delete channel and now we can force this network or this node to always render at frame 30. So we're going to plug this in over here. So, and now as you can see, it doesn't matter where my time node is. So even though I'm at the high the frame number, it's always going to render out frame 30. And this is mainly useful for the game engine. So that's what I want to also do is add this to our menu. So we want to grab the frame and set this to simulation and say output frame number. And that's it for this video. In the next videos, we will focus a bit more on bringing this in the game engine. So if you're not really interested in bringing this into the game engine, you can already use this in Houdini for your Houdini project and other tools. But if you're interested in bringing it into the game engine, then the next videos will be super useful and talk a bit more about that.